Hello guys, welcome back to our pseudocode lessons. This is our third lesson looking at pseudocode. And so far we've covered the basics behind it, including the layout, the structure, some of the keywords that we use. We've looked at assignment in terms of putting data inside of a variable. We've also covered conditional statements or better known as if statements, which was in the previous lesson. And in today's lesson, we're going to cover this term iteration or better known as loops in terms of programming. So today we need to understand when to use iteration in pseudocode and why we need to repeat instructions in a certain algorithm. And then more importantly, we need to differentiate the different types of loops or iteration that we use in terms of count controlled and condition controlled. Okay, so count controlled is what we call a for loop and a condition controlled is what we call a while and a repeat until loop. So we'll go into detail of all of these different loops and make sure that we understand when we need to use each loop given a certain scenario. So when instructions in an algorithm need to be repeated, so when they need to happen more than once, this is called iteration, okay? So to iterate means to go back and do it again. So again, I'm treating this as if you've not experienced any programming whatsoever, but you've come this far in the lessons and you've seen some basic algorithms and also covered some flowcharts as well. So a loop structure is to repeat instructions that are in an algorithm. Now there are three ways in which we do this. The first way is when we know how many times we need to repeat an instruction. So when it's a set number of repetitions, when we know an instruction has to repeat 10 times or 20 times, we use what we call a for loop, or as the syllabus refers to it, a count controlled loop. So count controlled means we know how many times it needs to loop and we control that amount by setting what we call a counter. So the for loop, is a count controlled loop and it's when we know how many times it needs to run. The next two are both called condition controlled. Now imagine if we combined an if statement with a loop, that's kind of what we have here. Because with an if statement, we have a condition that an algorithm has to meet. And in the condition control loop, we also have a condition. Now the difference between the two here is that one checks before and one checks after. Now a repeat until loop, this one here, this is what we call a post condition loop because post condition implies that after the loop starts, we then check for the condition. Okay, so the word repeat means that the instruction is going to repeat until a condition is met. So we set the condition at the end. Okay, so a post condition loop is a repeat until. A post condition loop, a repeat until loop, will run at least once. The instruction inside the repeat until loop will always run at least once, no matter what. And that's one of the biggest differences between this and the precondition loop which is a while loop. Okay, so this bottom one here is a precondition because what it does is it checks beforehand, it checks before the loop if the condition has been met. And if it has, it will do the loop until that condition says otherwise. Okay, so a precondition loop is what we call a while loop. And what we'll do is we're gonna go through the same algorithm, so the same instructions, but we're gonna write the instructions using these three different types of loops. So the algorithm itself is going to do the same thing, but we're gonna use three different methods in order to do it. We're gonna use a count controlled loop, a post condition loop, and a precondition loop in order to do it. Okay, so the purpose of the algorithm is to print 10 stars, okay, or 10 asterisks. And like I said, we're gonna use the three different types of loops in order to do it. So the first one, a for loop, we need to use a variable we need to create a variable at the start and refer to it at the end of the loop. So here I've created a variable called counter and its start value is one. So it starts with the number one. And as it loops through, this value is going to increment by one. It's gonna stop when counter finally reaches the number 10. Now, all of this is defined in the first line here. You can see I've used the word for in capitals. I've created a variable called counter I've assigned it using an arrow, the value one, and I've said it's gonna stop when it reaches 10. So again, this is a variable. It's going to store the number one in the beginning, and it's going to increment each time this loops around and stop when it gets to 10. Now the first time this loop runs, count a set of one, and it goes down to this line. So it outputs a star. Then in this line, I've written the word next counter. That means counter goes up by one. So counter, will now equal two. But I go back to the beginning because it's a loop. I iterate the background and I run the code again. So counter is now two. We're not at 10 yet. So I output another star. Again, next counter, counter plus one, counter is now three and a star is output. And again, this will go round 
and keep iterating until 10 stars are output. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Finally, counter would equal to 10, and it would be highlighted here, and it would stop running. So the for loop would come to a halt, and the operation is complete. So when we know how many times we need to loop or iterate, then the for loop is best used. I've said here this loop is particularly useful when we are populating a list with a fixed known length. So this will be covered later on in the course, but if we've got a list of information, for example, a class of students that has 30 pupils in, I can run a for loop 30 times and put 30 student names into this list. Now the first out of the condition control loops that we're gonna look at is the repeat until. And if we just trace our minds back, this is what we call a post condition loop. Okay, we're checking for the condition at the end, which I'll get to in a minute. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. We're gonna output 10 stars, but this time using a repeat until loop, we need to create a counter in terms of its own variable. So I've created a variable here called counter. And the job of this variable is to simply count what loop that we're up to. At the end, where it says until, I check where that counter is reached. And once it reaches 10, or in other words, more than nine, that's when this loop will stop. So repeat until this condition is met, which means the code inside the repeat loop, all of this here, will repeat at least once because it doesn't check for the condition until afterwards. Okay, so let's just run through it. We've got a counter variable set to zero. Okay, so zero is stored inside of here. We go into the repeat loop and we simply output one star. So the asterisk is printed out. We then add one to the counter and store this number overwriting what was in it before. So counter is now equal to one. It then checks if counter is more than nine, which it isn't because it's one. So it goes back round and iterates back up here. Okay, so it goes in here and it repeats the loop again. Output another star. Tick, counter becomes counter plus one. Counter is now two. Is counter more than nine? Nope. So it goes back around and iterates again. Prints out a star and keeps going until counter, as you've guessed it, reaches more than nine. So once counter reaches 10, this condition is now met. So because this condition is met, the loop will then stop and it won't go back up to here the program will continue to whatever code follows, or it could just simply end, okay? So the repeat until loop checks after the code has been run. Now, the reason why this will always loop at least once, because it doesn't matter what we set counter to at the beginning, we could have set this to 999, and this loop would have ran at least once, because it didn't check for the counter until the last line of code. So even if it was 999, it would have outputted one star, then checked what the counter was, and then in this case, it would have stopped, because 999, is more than nine. But this is the biggest difference between this and a precondition loop, which we'll look at next. Now, as you can imagine, the precondition, we check for the condition before the loop begins. Okay, so we're checking here instead. We're using the same method of a variable called counter because we need some way of checking which loop that we're on. Okay, so we start the counter at zero, just like before, but instead here, we check if the condition is true or not before the loop starts. So here we're saying while counter is less than 10, we do the loop, okay? We run this code inside. So as you can see, counter is currently zero stored in, stored in here. That is true. So it outputs a star. And just like before, we add one to counter and store it. We go back around and we check, is counter less than 10 again? Yes, it is because it's only one. So we output another star. We keep going and adding one to counter each time. When counter finally reaches 10, this loop will then stop because this condition at the top won't be true. Once counter reaches 10, counter is not less than 10, it's equal to. So the loop will end, and like I said before, 10 stars will have been output. Precondition is what we're dealing with here. Pre checks before the loop, and this word is a while. Post condition is repeat until. Precondition is while, and then of course we have to end while, okay? Please bear in mind we have to indent as well just like the if statements from earlier. Okay, so the indented bit implies the code inside of the loop. But unlike the post condition loop, this type of loop won't always run at least once. In this case, if counter was set to 999, the code inside the loop will never have run because what it says is while counter is less than 10, which in this case it's not because it's 999, this is not true. So it would have skipped it all and simply went on to the next line of code. Okay, so hopefully that has made a little bit of sense of the three different types of loops. 
but simply being able to identify these three different types can gain you marks in the exam. And we'll see an example of a typical past paper question at the end of the video. So as always, guys, if you'd like to pause it and give these questions a go, by all means do so. But if we look at this first question here, we simply get asked to match up the type of loop with the description on the right-hand side. So I've seen this question before in the exam, so even if you do find pseudocode code tricky, you can still pick up marks by identifying which type of loop is which, simply by its description. So if we look at the descriptions, used when the condition is checked before executing the loop. Okay, so before, in other words, means pre, which means it's a precondition loop. Used when the number of the iterations is known, so we know the number, which is a count controlled loop, okay, otherwise known as a for loop, which is this one, which means finally runs at least once because the condition is checked after execution means post, the post means afterwards, and that is simply the last one that's left, okay? And this is known as a repeat until loop, okay? The first one, the precondition is a while loop. So while something is true, we run. Next, what will be output of the following pseudocode? Well, we set a variable called count to one, and while count is less than five, we output hello, and then add one to count. This is a little bit different than the previous example because we've got less than or equal to. So once count reaches five, the code will still run, but then it will end once it reaches six. So the first time it runs, count is equal to one, which is true, and it will output hello. Count plus one, so count is now two. Is it less than or equal to five? Yes, so it does it again. Count is now three, outputs it again. Count is now four, outputs it again. Count is now five, which is true because it's less than or equal to, so it prints it out for the fifth time. And then once count reaches six, this is now false and it'll stop running. So this will simply output hello five times. Question number three, the following pseudocode is supposed to print numbers from one to 10, but it contains an error. Identify and correct the mistake. So we create a variable called x and we set it to one. Now, while x is less than 10, which it is because it's currently one, we output x. So first of all, one is output. Now, as you can see, there's a line missing here and you've probably guessed what it is. If we look at the previous example, we've not added one to count, which we should have, okay? That is important in both a while loop and a repeat loop because we need to keep a track of how many times they've looped. So here it should say count becomes count plus one. And that goes in this gap here, okay? But not only that, once this loop got to nine, if we did have this line of code inside and X was equal to nine, while X is less than 10, means that x has to be less than. So when x equals nine, it would have printed out because that's true. But then as soon as x equaled 10, this is not met because 10 is not less than 10. So this should be less than or equal to if we wanna meet the requirements of printing one to 10. Likewise, we could have said more than 10 because that way when it got to 11, it would have stopped, but this would have stopped at nine because we've said less than 10. So there was actually two mistakes in this code and hopefully you've managed to spot at least one of them. Finally, identify each algorithm as a count controlled precondition or post condition. So hopefully you can remember which one's which. Count controlled, otherwise known as a for loop, as we declare how many times it's gonna run. In this case, it's 10 times, one to 10. Precondition, so we check before the loop, is a while loop, because we're checking before the code runs. So this one is a precondition. And then a post condition leaves us this one because we are checking afterwards for a condition and this loop will run at least once. Okay, post condition loop will run at least one time inside and then check at the end if the condition is true or not. So hopefully that's made sense guys and you are able to differentiate the three types of loops. Hopefully you can also start to think of when you might need to use a loop because just like conditional statements and assignment statements, these are the absolute fundamentals when it comes to programming which when we come to unit eight, having this base knowledge and having this foundation will set you up and make it so much easier to understand. And trust me, if you're able to follow along this far and understand everything, then you'll be absolutely fine and on course to achieve good marks in the paper two exam, okay? Just knowing these basic pseudocode statements is what paper two is all about, okay? So again, hope you've managed to follow along and I will hopefully see you in the next video.